I'm Tori Lee, and I was five years old when I was diagnosed with cancer. She was the youngest, so she was doted on a lot by her older sisters. She grew up a little fast with the older girls around, but full of energy, very typical toddler. So we were getting excited. She was getting really close to starting school and you know all the things that she was looking forward to doing. Leading up to the diagnosis, she had just started to become a little bit lethargic, and she was experiencing lots of infections, like ear infection, UTIs, and things weren't clearing up. And they did a little bit of a more thorough exam, and she, I, I think she felt that her spleen was enlarged, which was something that wasn't detected in an earlier visit. And that, unbeknownst to us, was a sign that you know there could be some kind of uh, cancer. And they said, well, we think you need to head over to the hospital. And so we kind of knew that this wasn't a good situation. I'm not a fan of needles at all. So yeah, I remember that part, but not so much in the beginning. We've never been, none of the kids were ever in a hospital. None and this children. was our, our, our first stay there. And we went into the pediatric unit that they are gonna do this procedure. And I remember a dog walking in. And this is new to us. And we're like, you have a dog. It was a therapy yeah. dog, but we thought we, we thought we like a dog know. got loose, and, you know, and th that's how on edge we were. We were ready to snap if you looked at us wrong. I mean, we were shaking. We were we were scared. We really were scared. And then, of course, we got the you know, positive diagnosis of leukemia, and then that whole was like a out of body body experience. Just not this isn't happening. It was you know disbelief. And, you know, it was hard to explain to her what cancer was at all. You know, we didn't you know know many children at that point who had ever had cancer. We were in a bad way. We followed the traditional protocol for treating ALL. She was a delayed responder, which means she didn't respond as quickly to the chemotherapy, so it lengthened her treatment and added some more high-dose chemotherapy, and she had, you know, pretty much every side effect imaginable, and she was hospitalized, you know, dozens and dozens of times for the first cycle. My mom and dad spent the night at the hospital. My dad lived in this like recliner couch. He slept there all the time. When we went to CHOP, my sisters actually visited for Christmas along with my grandparents. And that was like the best night ever. It was just fun. And I like got to like forget about my surroundings for like an hour or two. We were kind of finishing up. She was in the maintenance stage. It was the end. She was just taking oral chemo. Hair was coming back. She was resuming some activities and she relapsed. And this time, it, not only in her bone marrow, it was in her spinal fluid. So she needed more high-dose chemo in addition to cranial radiation. I think that was worse than the first diagnosis because you'd gone through hell and you know, you're thinking the end is in sight and now you know what you have to go back and do again for two more years. So that was crushing. At times, surprise, we even made it. She was in a bad way for many infections and things that were very scary. But we got through the second and she relapsed again. So now our only option was to go for a bone marrow transplant. We were, you know, gearing up and coordinating with the doctors in Philadelphia. Our doctor said to us that they were doing a trial and they wanted to collect Tori's T cells prior to starting the bone marrow transplant preparation. And she explained to us that if she didn't get into remission, which was a requirement for bone marrow transplant, this would be a backup. It was a study that was just starting. Then we started to really research what this trial was all about. And we learned of the first child who was in the study. We reached out to the family. We did a lot of homework and tried to better understand. We just came from six weeks in the hospital. And then they sent us home because we were still prepping for bone marrow. And we were going into our local hospital for one week at a time to keep the cancer at bay. And then when they finally said we were approved for the T cell, we went and we did the T cell. Immediately after I got the T cells, I went to Dave and Buster's. So I was already, my energy level was already like higher than it was before. Yeah, that's how good she felt. That's how good she, I mean, that was the difference between T cells and chemotherapy. And that was, you know, she was running around and I think we're both crying. We're just like, oh my God, yeah. you know. She likes hanging out with her friends. She likes going to the beach. She likes, Sports. she's your typical 14 year old kid. 
She did not have her first complete year of school till fourth grade. She was on student council. She just received a leadership award at her graduation. She's doing great. I'm going to be attending Ocean Township High School. I'm planning on playing basketball there. Me and my friend are doing tennis in the fall. And in the spring, I'm gonna be on my mom's track team. She really is just enjoying life. We've had good news, so it's five years this past April. And as you get further out, you let your guard down a little, but I don't think we'll ever completely let it down. But that's just the nature of, of this. I'm good, yeah, it definitely put me where I am today. Yeah, I wouldn't be here without it.